Hey guys, welcome back to Team Pandori. I've always had a soft spot for arcade races. The only time I saw my dad actually interested in a game was at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, where we duked it out at Ridge Racer. It seems that nowadays, if you live in the US, you get all the fun with all these arcade one-up machines. Ridge Racer, Outrun, oh. Well, it wasn't long until a friend of the channel, Total Key, pointed us in the direction of the PVC pipe drive sim thing. And today, about half a year later, I've decided to try and build it. Let's see how long, how expensive, how strong, and how skilled you need to be to make this thing. We currently have these things. A Driving Force GT, a G25, and a Subaru car seat we got from auction. The reason why I got this is because I miss my old car so much. Subaru Legacy, brilliant car. So we're gonna head off to the home improvement store. From here we need pipes. Believe it or not, there are some pipes that are from Panasonic. We can't exactly go 100% to plan, as we don't have inches here, so all values have been converted to centimeters. I'm also a bit of a cheapskate, and all these Panasonic bits are pretty expensive. Whereas these generic 4 meter pipes go for about 1,600 yen each. There's also plenty of connectors for us to use. After purchasing 9 meters of pipe, we measure out and start cutting in the store. Measuring tape, the saw, and this black pen we could use for free. We also got the thinnest pipe, so it's easier for us to cut. One hour had passed and we did this much. Three more lots to go. After working up a sweat, it's time to reclaim the juice. Freaking typical. Never knew you liked car. Nah, I'm a Pepsi guy. After around three hours of cutting pipe, we can get the connectors. For the 50mm pipes, we need to use these. 158 yen each. Next up, 90 degree and 45 degree elbows. We have enough of everything except for the T-connections. I'll get them from a different store. Now we can start assembling the unit. Oh yeah, this chair. Mm. So with PVC pipe assembly, all we need to do is stick it together a bit like Lego. Might be good if you have a mallet handy to get them pipes pushed in hard enough. You can always just use your fist or use body weight. Those are very nice socks. Thanks, John. I got them from uh, Amazon. I was joking. They look like Wesley's stupid face. If you have fraying bits on the end, you can use sandpaper or rub it off with your hand. Rubbing one off with sandpaper sounds painful. Now we just continue following the plan.
the last pipe in, the assembly is complete. And this is how it looks. Let's pop the seat down, check if it all fits. If you imagine there's a steering wheel here, it's pretty decent. This bar feels sturdy, but I think it takes a lot of room up for no reason. Now to take off these stickers. There's next to no reason using a hairdryer, just pick them off with your fingernails. And it looks a lot cleaner. As we're done with the plastic, we should tidy up. If we don't, the missus will get angry. The joy of using pipe is we can change bits if we need to. So I'll take out this bar and add a bit for the gear shifter on the left side. We'll just go off feeling here, just using a piece of wood as a mount. We'll measure the gap from this T-socket and cut an extra pipe to fit in. We can then tidy up the bits on the right. And as is, I'm pretty happy with this rig now. Time to paint. First we're gonna rinse it, and with water we're gonna use some sandpaper. As we're using PVC pipe, the surface needs to be a little rough so our paint can stick. We can then rinse again. Then dry it with a cloth. Don't have a cloth, so I'm going to use a kitchen towel. Cheapskate. Before we use any paint, we're going to use plastic primer. This will help the paint stick. Use some kitchen towel to spread the primer a bit. And then, as we wait for the primer to set, we can start with a wood primer. From left to right, we have mounts for the seat, gear shifter, footboard, and wheel. After leaving the primer to set for about 30 minutes, we can apply our first layer of paint. I'm using acrylic paint here, only because it's cheap. One of these cans goes for about $1. Cryolon Fusion was recommended, but for me, around $80 a can is not worth it. As you spray, make sure the can keeps moving as to apply an even, light coat. Then move on to the wood. Once the paint has dried a little, we can turn it over to continue painting. But first we should dry off this water. Once we've finished off the first layer of paint, we can move on to the wood. Now we can leave the paint to dry for a bit, and then give the plastic the second layer of paint. We then wait until this layer is dried, to then give it one more layer of clear. Adding this layer of paint will give it a longer lifespan. And now for the wood. And that's us done with the painting. Not difficult, but it takes a long time to wait for the paint to dry. So let's get to the mount for the seat. One side we can just use a stick, whereas the other side is not the same. We need to use an extra piece of wood so the chair can sit flat. We're gonna use this glue, which is good for wood and metal. We'll use one of the best games ever as a weight and then let it dry. We can use a few dabs of super glue to keep these pipes together. For the base of the chair, I'm going to use this portrait of a cow. Got this from Ikea ages ago and we're going to throw it out. We can use these small screws and some pipe mounts to attach it. Oops. It's pretty self explanatory, we just screw in both sides. 
will attach a total of six mounts to this board, two per pipe. That's not moving anywhere. Before we attach the seat, we should sort out these mounts. So they should go like this. We'll use some of this glue. If this isn't good enough, we can use epoxy resin. Gonna leave it to dry for a bit. Then use some screws to secure it a bit more to the rail. We can then place the seat on the board. Now to start with the wheel mount. Gonna place this on lengthways, and then once again use these pine mounts. We'll use two on the front and two on the back. For the foot pedals, we're gonna place a board down here. And you guessed it. This time we'll only place two on the back. Now we're gonna place a wheel here so we can judge where the seat should be. So with every hole we see, we're gonna screw it and then glue it. For the foot pedals, we're gonna place them down and then draw an outline with pencil. On the back, there are some mounting holes. For Logitech G25, we need M6 bolts. We're gonna use a ruler to line up the holes, then mark each end with a pencil. We first do this vertically and then horizontally. We then mark the points on the footboard and then line them up with a ruler or a straight stick. I have a straight stick hand. Where the lines meet, we can drill holes. We could do all six holes, but two should do. It still doesn't fit. It still doesn't fit. Use our drill to make a bigger hole until it does. Success. Next up is the gear stick. With all other bits in place, it seems the gear stick should be a lot higher. As we said earlier, the beauty with the pipe system is we can customize it. So we can extend this pipe a little, at the top, and then find out that the board is way too big. So we can make another one. After cutting and painting, this fits much better. Now to add some smaller pipe bits on the side, and then mount it up. This doesn't fit flush, so you need to use some longer screws. We also cut a little piece of wood for the handbrake. To attach this, we'll need to lift the frame and use the mount from above. We'll only attach one screw on each side. We can easily turn this over. These bits are going to be kind of dangerous, so we need to tuck them in somehow. We can bend them in using some pliers. Then screw it into the side. So this handbrake is gonna go here. There are four mounting holes at the bottom, but to get to them, we need to use an Allen key, also known as a hex wrench. After we loosen this nut, we can take out the mount. This board is at an angle, so we can place two nuts underneath as we screw in the mount. We can now insert the handbrake. The bolts from the outside first. Then pull the handbrake out to then sort out the inside. Now I can tighten the rest up. Compared to the other wheel, the G25 has a lot of play. We got these from the 100 yen shop. We can just add them to the little hooks, minimizing the gap. Now we've got a much tighter grip. We can do the same for the gear stick. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna hook it up to the PlayStation 3. One of the best driving games ever.
And this feels awesome. As this game does not use the hate shifter, we needed to try something else. Gran Turismo 6. But using the PlayStation 3, with audio only coming out of this monitor, it seems a bit of a waste. So we added this 2.1 Logitech system, and to add to that, the PC that me and my daughter made a year ago. And this is great. Every time we touch this, it improves. Now to mount the wheel a bit better. We'll use the same technique we did the foot pedal and use M6 screws to these holes at the back. We use the board underneath to shield the foot pedal from dust. Don't forget to tidy up. Then screw in from underneath. Also, I want to raise this monitor. To do it properly, we'd need a monitor mount. I have a spare monitor that's not being used, which sits slightly higher. As we do have earthquakes every now and then, we're going to use some of this sticky tape. This will also stop the monitor from shaking so much. We'll do the same with the speakers next to it. And now this is bliss. If you wanted to keep the unit grey, we could shave our $25 of our final price. Is it stable? Yep. Is it worth it? Only if you can spare the time. My missus is not going to be happy. Especially if she sees this, I mean... That looks like my dawn. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!